This season has seen some truly incredible Premier League Academy graduates make their full league debuts. Jonathan Rowe, Sonny Perkins, Tyler Onyango, the list just goes on and on. Yeah, alright, they might not all be household names just yet, but you have to be half decent to be playing Premier League football before you've even sat your A-levels. It is sometimes said that Premier League clubs lag behind their league gun, La Liga and Bundesliga rivals when it comes to developing young players. Typically, either because of a hyper-fixation on short-term results and a higher proportion of foreign players in the Premier League, which prevents domestic youngsters from getting first-team opportunities, or simply because academies in England do not produce the same kind of technically gifted youngsters as academies in other countries. Well, I thought I'd make a video assessing how valid those criticisms are and how they might have changed over the years, by taking a look at the best Premier League academy debutants every season since the Premier League's breakaway from the Football League in 1992. For the avoidance of any doubt, it doesn't matter how long the player spent in a Premier League academy all that matters is that their professional league debut came in the Premier League. So, Mason Mount, for example, couldn't be considered for the 2019-20 season, which was when he made his Premier League debut, despite coming through the Chelsea Academy, because he had already made his league debut for Vitesse in the Eredivisie two years earlier. John Terry, on the other hand, would be eligible because his league debut did come in the Premier League for Chelsea. Hopefully that is all straightforward enough, if not then, I'm sure it will become so as we rattle through the seasons. So without further ado, here is, in my view, the best Premier League Academy graduate slash debutant every season from 1992-93 to 2021-22. 1992-93, Sol Campbell. The inaugural Premier League campaign was one in which a number of young players left a real mark on the division. Roy Keane at Nottingham Forest, Gary Speed at Leeds United, and Ryan Giggs at Manchester United all made the PFA Team of the Year. Giggs, the youngest of them, at only 18 when that campaign began. His debut had come two seasons earlier though, in the penultimate First Division season, but another future Premier League great did enter the fray in 92-93. Sol Campbell made just a solitary appearance for Tottenham Hotspur, in the 1992-93 season, coming on as a substitute in place of fellow Premier League debutant Nick Barnby against Chelsea and actually managing to find the back of the net in a 2-1 defeat. The following season would be Campbell's real breakthrough though, firstly at fullback and then at centre-back. By the middle of the 1990s, Campbell was already among the best centre-backs in England and he went on to win a couple of Premier League titles following his infamous transfer to Arsenal on a Bosman. 1993-94, Robbie Fowler. Debut campaigns don't come much better than Robbie Fowler's 1993-94 campaign. A local lad who was born in Toxteth, Fowler burst onto the scene as an 18-year-old, scoring 18 goals in 34 games in all competitions. It should be noted that I am picking out the best player based upon the player's talent and what they went on to achieve, not the quality of their individual debut or even of their debut campaign, but by any of those metrics, Fowler would have emerged victorious for the 1993-94 campaign. One of the most natural finishers that the Premier League has ever seen, Fowler bagged a hat-trick in only his fifth Premier League appearance, and he remains Liverpool's all-time highest scorer in the Premier League, though Mohamed Salah is pretty rapidly closing him down. A very honourable mention goes to Gary Neville, who made the PFA Team of the Year five times and won eight Premier League titles, making him much more decorated than Fowler. But I don't think even he would argue that he was a better footballer than the Liverpool legend. 1994-95, Paul Scholes. The first season that presented a real dilemma, two Manchester United Academy graduates and future club legends made their Premier League debuts in the 1994-95 season. Manchester United finished second in the 94-95 season, and it was in August of 1995 that Alan Hansen uttered those famous words, you can't win anything with kids, in reference to Alex Ferguson's youthful starting 11 in a 3-1 defeat to Aston Villa. Naturally, Manchester United went on to win the league title that season, and 1994-95 season academy debutants David Beckham and Paul Scholes would both go on to have 
decent careers, winning a fair few trophies. I think Beckham was a really outstanding footballer, whose celebrity off the pitch has, if anything, detracted from his talent on it, but Scholes is one of the Premier League's greatest players of all time. Scholes made 25 appearances, and 17 in the Premier League, during his debut season, playing predominantly as a number 10. He later shifted even further forward, playing almost as a second striker, before gradually sliding further and further back into midfield, into his 30s, until he was operating as a deep-line playmaker. In all three roles, Scholes was outstanding. C takes this one, narrowly ahead of his former club and international comrade, with an honourable mention owed to Emil Heskey, who made his Premier League debut for Leicester City that season. 1995-96 Frank Lampard. Probably the most challenging season in this entire video, the 1995-96 campaign presented a dilemma between two former teammates and friends who both made their debuts for the same team that season. Frank Lampard and Rio Ferdinand both broke through under Harry Redknapp at West Ham United in the 1995-96 campaign, and both would become legends of the English game. For what it's worth, I think Ferdinand was the more talented of the two, particularly at a young age, even on the ball. Moved to centre-back, primarily due to his size and physical attributes, Ferdinand is the most gifted centre-back that English football has produced for at least the last 50 years. Frank Lampard, on the other hand, was very much a product of his own discipline and determination to become a top-class midfielder. In his first two seasons of Premier League football, during which time he played 15 games, Lampard didn't score a single goal. He ended his career as the highest scoring midfielder of the Premier League era and as Chelsea's highest scorer of all time. He edges it over Ferdinand due to the number of games he played in the Premier League and his monumental contribution during that time, but this one was really tough. 1996-97, Michael Owen. From one of the toughest selections in this video to one of the easiest, with all due respect to fellow 1996-97 Liverpool debutant Jamie Carragher, Michael Owen's inclusion in this list was never in too much doubt. Quite possibly the single most impressive teenage superstar that the Premier League has seen, when Owen broke into the Liverpool first team at the age of 17, there was almost nothing he couldn't do. Lightning quick, creative, good on the ball, and devastating in front of goal, he was an absolute sensation. He made only two appearances in the 1996-97 season, scoring one goal, but the following season, he struck 23 times in 44 games. Owen won the Premier League Golden Boot twice before he had even turned 20, which is just unimaginable now, and though injuries would rob him of the chance to become an era-defining player, he is still a bona fide legend of the Premier League, despite being an obvious narcissist who is entirely lacking in even the most basic sense of self-awareness possessed by most three-year-old children. 1997-98, Gareth Barry. A man who has made more appearances in the top flight of English football during the Premier League era than anyone else, Gareth Barry, should not be defined by that statistic alone. Though his longevity is Obviously very impressive, I feel as though Barry's talents are all too often downplayed. Undoubtedly, a little dirty and cynical at times, Barry was also a fantastic midfield all-rounder, and he was one of the best box-to-box -box players in the Premier League at Aston Villa throughout the 2000s. In 2009, Barry joined Manchester City, and he spent the next decade playing a really influential role for the Citizens, Everton, and finally West Brom from defensive midfield. The start of Barry's long and winding career came in the 1997-98 campaign, though, at Aston Villa, who he joined from Brighton at the age of 16. Barry was the Premier League's second youngest debutant that season, behind Francis Jeffers. And whilst it was Jeffers who captured much more interest and excitement at the time, he was playing in Malta 13 years later, whilst Barry was lifting a Premier League title. 1998-99, Steven Gerrard. Whilst I would consider the 1995-96 season to be the toughest straight shootout between Frank Lampard and Rio Ferdinand, no other season had as many outstanding candidates as the 1998-99 campaign. Steven Gerrard emerges victorious in my eyes, only narrowly ahead of Chelsea legend John Terry, meanwhile Joe Cole and Jonathan Woodgate 
also earn honourable mentions. It must be said that, at the time, Joe Cole was by far the most impressive of the quartet, and he is certainly evidence of English football's prior inability to properly nurture gifted ball players, which I alluded to in the introduction. Steven Gerrard was less blessed than Joe Cole with a ball at his feet, but he was a man with virtually no weaknesses. He made his Premier League debut in the 1998-99 season as a fullback, but he was soon playing in his preferred role as a tireless box-to-box midfielder. Though Gerrard never lifted the Premier League title as Liverpool captain, he did make the PFA Team of the Year on a record eight occasions. And I think he just about deserves to feature, very narrowly ahead of John Terry, who made the first of his 492 Premier League appearances during that season. 1999-2000 Ashley Cole. There are a number of players in this video who feature for the year that they made their Premier League debuts, of course, that is, the entire premise, but who enjoyed their full breakthrough campaigns the following season. Ashley Cole is one such player, given the fact that he made just a solitary Premier League appearance in the 1999-2000 season before really laying down a marker during the following campaign. As soon as he cemented his place in Arsene Wenger's starting lineup at Arsenal, it was clear that Cole was a special talent. Cole made the PFA Team of the Year four times, thrice at Arsenal and once at Chelsea. He made 385 Premier League appearances in total, and he is the greatest left-back of the Premier League era. So he takes top spot for the 1999-2000 season, ahead of Michael Carrick. 2000-2001 Jay Bothroyd I say this with all due respect to Jay Bothroyd, who is a talented centre-forward, but it is a bit of a drop-off for the 2000-2001 season in truth. My first two candidates, Jermaine Defoe and Sean Wright Phillips, were both ineligible, Wright Phillips because he first played four games for Manchester City in the first division, and Defoe because he spent a full season on loan at Bournemouth, where he made his league debut, before coming on for 22 minutes in West Ham's final game of the 2000 to 2001 Premier League campaign. Jay Bothroyd is very much eligible though, having made eight Premier League appearances, but failing to find the back of the net, for Coventry City that season. A rare globe-trotting English footballer, Bothroyd joined Perugia in Syria in 2003, and he has spent the last eight years scoring prolifically in Thailand and in Japan. Bothroyd's best season in Britain came in the 2010-11 campaign for Cardiff City in the Championship, which saw him win his first and last cap for England. 2001-02, Darren Bent. Sticking with England international centre-forwards, Darren Bent won 12 more caps for England and scored exactly 100 more Premier League goals than Jay Bothroyd. Unfortunate, in some respects, not to have won even more England caps, Bent struck 24 times in the Premier League during his most prolific campaign at Sunderland, a tally which was bettered by only Didier Drogba and Wayne Rooney that season. Bent's Premier League debut came at Ipswich Town, where he played five times and scored once in the 2001-02 campaign. 2002-03, Wayne Rooney. Speaking of the devil, mentioned only a moment ago there, Wayne Rooney is among the most iconic academy graduates of the Premier League era. A superstar at youth team level, anyone who witnessed Rooney from the age of about 11 onwards knew that he was destined for greatness. He made his Premier League debut for Everton in the 2002-03 season at the age of only 16, and just days before his 17th birthday, he scored a stunning long-range winning goal against the reigning Premier League champions Arsenal. Rooney obviously went on to sign for Manchester United in 2004, where he became the Red Devils' all-time leading goalscorer, and as brilliant as James Milner has been, perhaps enjoying slightly more impressive longevity than Rooney, he cannot match him for talent or all-round contribution. 2003-04, Aaron Lennon. A native of Leeds and a Leeds United Academy graduate may miss out in 2002-03, in the form of James Milner, to one of the league's greatest ever players, but the Leeds United youth ranks cannot be held down for too long. Aaron Lennon was just 16 years and 129 days old when he made his Premier League debut for Leeds United in the 2003-04 season, which made him the division's youngest player of the Premier League era at the time. In 2005, 
Following a season in the Championship, which saw Leeds fail to win an immediate promotion back into the Premier League, Lennon joined Tottenham Hotspur. Still starring in the Premier League now, almost 19 years on from his league debut, Lennon has made over 400 Premier League appearances in total, and he is widely regarded as having been responsible for the most iconic haircut and eyebrow shave combination in the entire history of the division. 2004-05, Cesc Fabregas. One of the three finest teenage footballers of the Premier League era, at least as far as I'm concerned, and arguably the very best of the lot, Cesc Fabregas, spent less than 12 months in the Arsenal Academy after joining the Gunners from Barcelona. An immense talent, who had already lit up the youth team game at international level, Fabregas became Arsenal's youngest ever player, aged 16 years, and 177 days old in their invincible 2003-04 campaign. But his Premier League debut would have to wait until the following season. Within just a couple of years of his debut, while still in his teens, Fabregas was already Arsenal's best and most important player. Soon he became their club captain, he won the World Cup, and he made an inevitable return to Barcelona, before coming back to the Premier League and inspiring Chelsea to the title during his debut campaign. By any metric, Fabregas takes this one, and with some degree of comfort. 2005-06, Gerard Piquet. There is a great deal of symmetry when it comes to Cesc Fabregas and Gerard Piquet's careers. Both men, or boys at the time I suppose, left Barcelona despite being very highly rated to join top four teams in England, before going on to win the World Cup and the Euros, in addition to returning to Barcelona to great acclaim and success. Unlike Fabregas, Piquet didn't make quite the same impact in England, returning to Barcelona when he was still fairly young and inexperienced, and remaining there ever since. Piquet made his professional league debut for Manchester United in the Premier League in the 2005-06 season, and he went on to play 23 games for the Red Devils in all competitions. It wasn't that Piquet wasn't highly thought of by Alex Ferguson, it was just a case of Nemanja Vidic and Rio Ferdinand being undroppable throughout most of his time at the club. Piquet joined Barcelona in the summer of 2008 as new boss Pep Guardiola's first signing, and he immediately became a key cog in the best team in Europe. Piquet has since made over 600 appearances for Barcelona, more than 100 for Spain, and he is one of the most decorated defenders to have ever played the game. An honourable mention is owed to Mika Richards, who really burst onto the scene that season, and to Lee Catamol, who really burst through some players' legs over the course of his 15 years in the game. 2006-07, Daniel Sturridge. The two outstanding players who made their league debuts in the Premier League in the 2006-07 season are Daniel Sturridge and Andy Carroll. Both look to have immense potential within the game. Sturridge is one of the most gifted and inventive English forwards for a generation, and Carroll as an enthusiastic target man who was almost unrivaled in the air. Unfortunately, both men were constructed out of pieces of shortbread and porcelain that had been stuck together using the Pritt stick from a Year 7 art class. Consequently, both Sturridge and Carroll have been plagued by injuries throughout their entire careers. I think that there can be little doubt that, at his peak, Sturridge was the superior player. And his peak was of course that 2013-14 season alongside Raheem Sterling and Luis Suarez. Sturridge's Premier League debut came at Manchester City in the 2006-07 campaign, aged 18, but just two years later, he turned down the Citizens' contract offers to join Chelsea on a free. 2007-08, Jack Rodwell. What do you mean you're really scraping the barrel for this one, Alfie? Yeah, alright, Jack Rodwell might be a man who is best known for almost bankrupting Sunderland AFC, and for picking up the salary of a star man at a Premier League team whilst he was rotting in a League One side's reserves. But there was a time when he was a very exciting debutant. When Rodwell made his Premier League debut in the 2007-08 season, age 16, he was a star man for England's under-17s. Pretty soon, Rodwell was a star man for both Everton and England's under-21s before becoming a full international in 2011 and then signing for Manchester City the following season. It was at that point that things began to fall apart a bit for Rodwell, from a footballing perspective at least, 
and he signed for A-League side Western Sydney Wanderers in November 2021, age 31. 2008-09, Jordan Henderson. The 2008-09 season was, in some respects, a bit of a tricky one, because two players with very contrasting career trajectories made their Premier League debuts that season, namely Jack Wilshire and Jordan Henderson. It is, I think, undeniable that Wilshire was, and in some respects, probably still is, the more gifted of the two. When he first broke through, Wilshire was extraordinary to watch, the type of player that the English game just doesn't seem to produce, and it seemed inevitable that he would be England's main man in midfield for the next decade and beyond. Of course, it wouldn't turn out like that, with injuries curtailing season after season of Wilshire's development, and he now plays his club football in Denmark. Jordan Henderson, on the other hand, was less impressive, I think it is fair to say, during his teens, while still looking like a really good prospect at Sunderland. However, following his move to Liverpool, a great many people cast doubt upon his ability. Fast forward 10 years, and Henderson is a key man at Liverpool, he has played over 400 games for the club, and he has captained them since 2015. All things considered, it has to be Henderson ahead of Wilshire. 2009-10 Phil Jones. Not every season can have a Wayne Rooney or Michael Owen announcing their arrival on the biggest stage, but Phil Jones is another player who is a bit of a meme these days, but was once an outstanding young player. Jones played nine games for Blackburn Rovers in the 2009-10 Premier League season, and by the following season, he was already a key man at Ewood Park. Following his £16.5 million move to Manchester United, Alex Ferguson said in a post-match press conference that he could become the club's best ever player. Better than Paul Scholes, George Best, and Bobby Charlton. That comment may have tempted fate a little, and since Ferguson retired, Jones has struggled, in terms of both injuries and consistency. Somehow, he is still at Manchester United, age 30, despite having played only three Premier League matches in the last three seasons. 2010-11, Adam Forshaw. I think it would be fair to describe the 2005-06 to 2010-11 period as being the weakest five years in terms of Premier League Academy graduates making their Premier League debuts. It should be said that there were still some very talented young players in the Premier League during that time, whether that be Gary Cahill, Theo Walcott, or Gareth Bale. It is just the case that all three of them made their Senior League debuts outside of the Premier League. The same could very nearly have been said of Adam Forshaw, who made just a solitary Premier League appearance for Everton in the 2010-11 season, despite spending three seasons training with the Toffees first-team squad. Moves to Brentford, Wigan Athletic, and Middlesbrough followed, and Forshaw is now back in the Premier League, having played 12 times so far this season, for Leeds United. An honourable mention goes to Rotherham United Shane Ferguson, who made his Premier League debut in the 2010-11 season for Newcastle United. 2011-12, Raheem Sterling. Bringing some class back to this list and restoring some respectability when it comes to the reputation of Premier League academies, Raheem Sterling didn't actually spend most of his youth development in a Premier League academy at all. From the age of 8 to 15, Sterling was part of the youth ranks at Queen's Park Rangers, whilst the club played in the championship, before becoming the most expensive 15-year-old of all time when he joined Liverpool for a potential £2 million. Sterling made just three Premier League appearances in the 2011-12 season, but the following year, he became a mainstay in the Liverpool team. In 2012, still aged only 17, Sterling made his England debut. Now aged 27, Sterling has already scored 10-plus goals in all competitions for nine consecutive seasons. He has won nine trophies, and he has been capped some 72 times by England. 2012-13, Serge Gnabry. Harry Kane made his Premier League debut in the 2012-13 season, but by that time, he had already played in League One and in the Championship, on loan at Leighton Orient and Millwall thus rendering him ineligible. I was still spoilt for choice for the 2012-13 campaign, which was the season in which both Luke Shaw and James Ward-Prowse made their Premier League debuts for Southampton. Ward-Prowse 
is pipped to a spot in this list by Serge Gnabry, however, who made a solitary Premier League appearance for Arsenal in the 2012-13 season. Gnabry played 18 times for Arsenal in total, in all competitions, before being told that he wasn't good enough to play for West Brom by Tony Pulis whilst on loan at the Hawthorns. Since then, the German international has done really rather well in the Bundesliga, having hit double figures for goals in each of the last four seasons at Bayern Munich, where he won the Player of the Season award in the 2018-19 campaign. 2013-14, Moussa Dembele. I am forced to leave Jack Grealish out of this list, since his single two-minute cameo appearance in the Premier League in 2013-14 came after, albeit during the same season, as his official league debut on loan at Notts County in League One. That meant that it was a choice of Moussa Dembele or Adam Armstrong, who were two of the three youngest Premier League debutants in the 2013-14 season. And whilst I like Armstrong a lot, it is Dembele who comes out on top in that particular battle. The Frenchman only ever made two Premier League appearances at Fulham, and it was his debut campaign at Celtic, in which he scored 32 goals that really put Dembele on the map. Contracted to Lyon these days, Dembele collapsed during a training session on loan with Atletico Madrid last season, and only managed one goal in 23 games for both Lyon and Atletico all season. So it is great to see him seemingly having made a full recovery, and back among the goals this season. 2014-15, Andreas Christensen. Whilst it is tough to beat the 1998-99 season, in terms of the sheer calibre of available players, the class of 2014-15, as I have chosen to call them, perhaps had the most solid candidates of any season. Ainsley, Maitland, Niles, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Matt Target, Hector Bellerin and Andreas Pereira all made their league debuts in the Premier League that season. But so too did Andreas Christensen, and I think he's better than all of them. Christensen played one game for Chelsea that season, the final game of the season, coming on as a substitute for the last 12 minutes of a 3-1 win against Sunderland. Seven years on, the 25-year-old has played more than 150 games for Chelsea, 90 of those coming in the Premier League, in addition to enjoying two impressive seasons on loan at Borussia Mönchengladbach. 2015-16, Marcus Rashford. It is awfully tempting to pick Fakayo Tomori for the 2015-16 season, given his fine form at AC Milan at this moment in time, contrasted with Marcus Rashford's most difficult spell at Manchester United. If that trend were to continue, naturally, you would have to pick Tomori, and I have little doubt that most people watching this video already would. Just 12 months ago, however, I doubt that almost anyone would, and a few years ago, when Rashford was already starting games at a World Cup, most people had never even heard of Tomori. Ultimately, I still think Marcus Rashford is a man of many talents, even if those talents would possibly be better nurtured at this stage, away from Old Trafford. Rashford also enjoyed just about the most stunning breakthrough of any player in Premier League history, following up the brace that he scored on his debut against Midtjylland in Europe, with a brace against Arsenal on his Premier League debut, as well as an assist, in a 3-2 win. And the following week, he scored the only goal in the Manchester derby. 2016-17, Trent Alexander-Arnold. The 2016-17 season presented a torturous choice between Trent Alexander-Arnold and Declan Rice, who haven't just been two of the best young players in the Premier League, over the past four or five years, but two of the best players outright. I think Rice is among the best players in his position in all of world football, but that still isn't enough for him to feature ahead of Trent at this stage. Aged only 23, Alexander-Arnold is already one of the greatest and, comfortably, the most revolutionary fullback that the Premier League has seen. He made his debut in the 2016-17 season following an injury to Nathaniel Klein, and he hasn't looked back since then, already having played more than 200 games for Liverpool. 2017-18, Phil Foden. When I think of outstanding teenagers in the Premier League, I immediately think of Wayne Rooney, Michael Owen, and Cesc Fabregas, all of whom went from unknown to superstars in the blink of an eye. I think Phil Foden perhaps deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as those three, in terms of fantastic young Premier League players, 
but his breakthrough was very different. I have been raving about Foden on this channel since 2017 because I felt that he offered something unique in terms of being so gifted, progressive on the ball, and direct in possession, attributes that England have so often lacked from their midfielders. However, he didn't make his debut and become an immediate sensation like a Rooney or an Owen, and in the long term, I think that is actually a good thing. Foden has been more gradually immersed into the Manchester City first team, which has seen his development look very linear, with few signs of burnout. Age 21, he has now played more than 150 games for the Citizens, and you could make a case, given Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland's contract situations, that there is no more valuable player in world football right now. 2018-19, Bakayo Saka. If Harvey Elliott hadn't suffered that horrible dislocated ankle right at the start of this season, whilst he was playing so well, I suspect I would have a pretty tricky decision on my hands here. As it happens, Elliott is still getting back into the full swing of things, meanwhile Bakayo Saka, who is two years older than him, it should be said, is playing the best football of his career right now at Arsenal. Saka only played once in the Premier League during the 18-19 season, but he nailed down a starting berth the following season, and he has already played more than 120 games for the Gunners. Versatile, gifted, and immensely likeable, Saka won the Player of the Season award at Arsenal last season, as only a 19-year-old, and he has been even more impressive this season. 2019-20, Curtis Jones. A very talented Liverpool teenager may miss out for the 2018-19 season, but where Harvey Elliott fails, through no fault of his own may I add, Curtis Jones succeeds. I must admit, every time I watch Curtis Jones, the more impressed I am by him. I'm not sure if that is him improving or me just noticing the strengths in his game more. I suspect that it is a bit of both, but it's pretty obvious at this stage that Liverpool have a real talent on their hands. The way in which Jones receives the ball, typically already on the half turn, the way he beats players, his weight of pass, and his composure on the ball are all hallmarks of a future England international. In fact, were not for England's market improvements in central midfield in recent years, I suspect Jones's England debut may already have arrived. Jones made six appearances in the Premier League in the 2019-20 season, and he has made 42 in total for Liverpool to date. Honourable mentions go to Billy Gilmore and Armando Brosia. 2020-21. Anthony Alanga. Forgive me for my ignorance, but before making and researching this video, I didn't actually realise that Anthony Alanga made his Premier League debut last season, rather than this season, despite the fact that he started and scored for Manchester United in their last game of last season against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Alanga made two Premier League appearances in total last season, and he has already played 12 times in the league, and 18 times in total this season, having established himself a little under Ralph Rangnick. Fast, exciting, and brilliant on the ball, Alanga is extremely impressive for a 19-year-old, and the Swedish wide man recently received his first call-up to Sweden's senior squad for their World Cup qualifiers against the Czech Republic. An honourable mention goes to Fabio Carvalho, who made his Premier League debut for Fulham last season, and has enjoyed a real breakout campaign under Marco Silva in the Championship this season. 2021-22, Tino Livramento. The final inclusion of what has turned out to be a rather monumental video, whilst I didn't realise Anthony Alanga had played in the Premier League last season, I also assumed that Tino Livramento must have played at least some Premier League football last season. That shows quite how little I know about football and what a total and utter buffoon and indeed fraud that I am for attempting to make football videos on YouTube. It also shows how extraordinary Tino Livramento's first season of first team football has been. The 2020-21 Chelsea Academy Player of the Year joined Southampton over the summer with first-team opportunities at right-back hard to come by at Stamford Bridge. This season, Livramento has played 23 times in the Premier League, and I think the 19-year-old has been utterly brilliant. A future England international, of that I have very little doubt, 
It wouldn't even surprise me if it was Lee Romanto rather than, say, Rhys James or Trent Alexander-Arnold, who made the position his own for the three Lions over the next decade once Kyle Walker has been deposed. That is it for today's video, but thank you all very much as ever for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, I sincerely hope that that was the case. Let me know your thoughts and disagreements, if you have any, down below in the comments, and make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. You can also find me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so. And why wouldn't you?